So why is it important to retail? Well, we just finished our product symposium just last week and a lot of us have a lot of product knowledge. So right now is the action plan right now. So it's truly important to build your business through retailing. So for the past five and a half years in shop.com, uh, retailing is really a part of what my journey is about you know, in shop.com. To be successful in the shop.com journey, retailing is really one of the fundamentals of building this business. So why do all of us need to retail? First of all, is to generate a lot of cash flow to cover our business expenses. You know, this is a business, it's just not a, a, a hobby. So whatever we do, we want to make sure that there's certain profits that come back to us so that we can support our business. To basically build this business, you know, it's kind of take time. For me, it's truly important. Uh, if I retail, I basically can earn about 25 to 30 percent retail profit that this will help me to fuel all my expenses whatever that i'm doing so it's important to create lots of babies for yourself and that is also to also for your team too now retailing is the best way to recruit too because when you have so many customers in your the system you basically will also know that who are the one who's really ready to be your partners? So retailing to recruiting is very important. Now, retailing is also another way to get all your people to do the uh, similar activities so that it be, become result producing and it will increase the stability in your organization. Now for us as an unfranchised owner, these are the reason why we do retailing. But for our customers, when we do retail, we make it possible for them to have an access to all our exclusive brands. On top of them, we also introduce them to all our affiliate partners, our uh, partners who are in the uh, uh, affiliation marketing. So therefore, it is truly a, a very important uh, fundamentals way to build your business. Now for shop.com for our company, when we do retailing, we are basically exposing the products to so many of our customers. So in a way, we are able to also collect customer feedback for, custom, uh, for our company so that we can help our company shop.com to set the next direction. What are the products that is really trendy and important uh, so that all of us as a shop.com owner, we are able to have in, uh, trendy products for retailing. So let's look at it. So how do you nail the sales? So for me, for the past few years that I have done shop.com, I realized that we have wonderful exclusive products. So number one, if you want to be a good retailer, first of all, you got to be a products of products. So to be a products of products, what does it mean? It's kind of like living and as uh, being a living example of what you sell what you recommend to others, and what you advise to others to buy. You got to personify what you are preaching because you got to show them what you are thinking. Whatever you are using, you are going to share with them, okay? Just don't tell them that it's good, it's good, it's good. You got to basically tell them that it benefits them. For example, it would be terrible okay I, I will feel very incredibly skeptical if someone tell me that no oh, this product is good but when i ask them more they have not even tried it themselves and they have not even tried it you know share it with their families so for me it's very simple if i want someone to to buy you know to sell if someone's trying to sell me a product i want to make sure that it works and of course they have tried it so very simply, if you want me to buy your products, you better be able to show me that you have successfully implemented your advice or taking your own products. So do remember our customer value, authenticity and transparency above all. Show them that it works on you first before you try to sell it to others. So for as an unfranchised owner, we need to learn not to recommend any simply 
anything to others unless you have tried it. So therefore, to be a product of products is truly very important. Now, the next thing is you've got to power yourself with knowledge. You know in Shop.com, there's lots and lots of training. So GMTSS product training is crucial. We have just finished our product symposium and you know that we have learned so much from all the few leaders and plus we have four doctors to us who have spoken to us. So this is truly a very important uh, uh, training to, to be in. So why is it important to have product knowledge? First of all, if you have product knowledge, it could mean more sales for you. How so? Because when you have product knowledge, you are well versed with, on products and you can answer any questions that your customer throw to you. So when you have product knowledge, it's basically you have, you have developed confidence in yourself, in the way you present. When we can present the benefits accurately and persuasively, you know you have already win the better. We must also learn to know how to address the customer needs. Customers are more likely to trust those who show confidence in themselves and who has, are able to answer their questions. Customers are also more likely to respond to those who are very passionate about the products and eager to share the benefits with them. So therefore, you need to get all the knowledge, all right? And there are so many ways to learn. Where do you get all this knowledge? A lot of them is all from shop.com, GMTSS training, audios, use all the tools that is already provided by the company. We have many, many links that link back to the products and you got to read up because by reading, you gain more knowledge and you got to do some research on your own. So there are a lot of customers who will tell you that, hey, this works, that works, and there are many companies who show us, you know, that uh, a lot of products is working. But for us, this company, Shop.com, I truly believe in the yeah, products because a lot of them are science-based. All you need to do is just lead your customers to PubMed. There are so many clinical research, and all of us, we just need to lead them to read up, send them the right links, and make sure that you yourself know where to access to all the links. Now, how to nail more sales? You got to decide. After taking some of our products, after gaining so much knowledge from all the training, you got to decide what you want to major in, what you want to minor in. Because it's very simply what you're interested in. Because you are able to major in things that you, you, you are happy with and it, there's something that you enjoy when i became a shop.com owner because i'm a uh, i'm a you know a stay-at-home mom for so many years basically i have not much knowledge in a lot of areas so for me uh, motive was one of the first thing that i major in and because i'm quite a vain girl so i i put on makeup all the time i use skincare all the time so i i have decided that motive is the major that I want to be in. But along the way, I know that, you know, I need to minor in other division too. So you can major in health and nutrition, motive, TLS, whatever you are, you got to make sure that you got to be an expert in that area. So it's simply put in, choose a major that you are comfortable with in, and then slowly, you know, you expand your major, your interest into other areas. And you do know that health and nutrition uh, is a consumable product. Uh, people buy and they repeat the sales. So therefore, if you want more BBs, you want retailing to be, you know, a bit, bit more retail profit than more BBs. So, you know, health and nutrition products, TLS, these are all a lot of repeats. So motives became my uh, minor subsequently, all right? Now, to be a very, very successful retailer, you've got to listen up because it's truly important. You need to listen to your customers. It's very simply put into this, um, you know, I, I just need to let you know that if you're someone who just like to talk and talk and talk and don't listen to your customer, you may miss out a lot of sales. Your objective should be to help your customer to gain 
some benefits out of it and to solve some of the problems. And before you can provide any solution to any of your customers, you got to understand what they want, what they really need, or what they want to experience. All this is just simply listening to them. Because through the conversation that you talk to them, that's when you, you know, doing small talk with them, uh, getting to know them, that's when you start to learn what is the pain that they have, what are the things that they're looking for. So it is important to focus on relation first, relationship first, instead of just closing the sales. Because if you are just looking for transaction, come on, a lot of our customers can feel that. They have so many friends who are trying to sell them products too. So why would they want to spend their money with you, all right? So your customer must be happy with you and with the products. So how do you make them to have a very positive experience? Simply by listening to them, because whether it is a positive or negative response from them, we know how to handle slowly. So you do understand that customers nowadays has a louder voice all right, than before. Because why? Because through the social media, through their, you know, the exposure of the social media, they can read up, they know they are very, very knowledgeable. So just remember, when you are faced with a lot of situation, when your customers are giving you negative responses, be sure that you are there to, to answer them confidently and you need to tackle, you need to handle all these uh, positive or negative reviews from them uh, in a very, very positive tone. Now, by listening to them, you are basically value their opinion. Regardless whether that is, um, you know, they are giving you very positive or negative review, you must, you must be all, you know, be very polite and respect their opinion and thank them no matter what, because you never know that they were going to come back for more things, all right, from you. They may reject you this time, but they will remember that you're polite, you're ready to service them, you're, get, you're going to be a good consultant to them, they're going to come back to you. So remember, it boils down to building good rapport with them and, you know, use all this relationship building for your future sales too. Next thing I want you to know that to be a good retailer, you got to be a good storyteller too. I know everyone loves to, to hear a, a good story. Now, storytelling seriously is fantastic because it can stimulate the emotional side of your brain. It can capture the attention of your customers because when you're sharing stories, you're basically sharing your experience too. Stories can also sometimes motivate someone to take action. Perhaps some of them, they are not ready to purchase. But the thing is, when you share a very good stories with good experience, it can swirl them to your, you know, you can influence them to purchase something from you. Remember, during the storytelling, you've got to put in some facts and information and you're going to make it interesting. And the most important, it got to be very relevant to what their needs is. So by listening to them about, you know, what is their needs, what they love to experience, you are able to build up a story that is able to influence them, all right, and to change their mind. Stories can also transform beliefs. So therefore, when you gather testimonies, when you gather stories from all your partners, it is truly important for you to compile it into your list. For, for example, for me, I, when I started Shop.com journey, I really have not much experience in building this business. But because I don't have a story for myself, I was looking around for stories. I listened to all the few leaders, what they are experiencing, you know, by taking some of our products and they are already sharing lots and lots of good stories. I collect them and whenever there's a need to share uh, stories that can help some of my customers, I will tell them that, hey, so and so, my friend has actually used this product before and, you know, I have 
they have experienced very fantastic results. And because of all this sharing, people start to believe in me and they start to say that, hey, perhaps I would like to try that. One of the favorite, my favorite story is to share about my mother using Pentaxa. And because my mother has experienced a lot of goodness of Pentaxa, how he has improved the skin, her skin, and I've been sharing these stories day in, day out, whenever I want to sell Pentaxa, and gosh, I have gained a lot of sales just by sharing my mom's stories. Now, how about this, leveraging on your team? You know, retailing is just not about yourself. Uh, besides sharing from uh, testimonies from all your teams, members, and all that, you got to know that you, you, are, you are not alone in this journey. I leverage a lot on my teams. Um, some of them, they are experts. I, I have, I'm very privileged to partner with doctors, biochemists, nutritionists, uh, people who are very expert in this field. Now, I leverage on them because I know that I'm, I have no... Uh, experience uh, in this area. To me is pulling them together, running events and do things together. And sometimes I do consult with them. So it is important, all right, for all of us, if you want to retail, uh, to gain knowledge for yourself at the same time to tap on the expertise of all these partners who has uh, expertise in this area. One of the way, if, if you don't have uh, partners who have in uh, who are very, um, you know, who, who who basically very expert in this area, you need to find someone to be in your team. But if you do not have it, find leverage on the GMTSS team. That's the reason why we always come for GMTSS meeting because this is where we get to get to know more people. I am so happy to have in my team, you know, even in my cross team, when I meet people, I know that at times when I can't get through my customers, I swing them to them to all this uh, uh, event too. All right. So leveraging on your team is also tapping on people power. Sometimes you, you got to share with all your customers that it's just, they are not the only one using the products. We have so many people in shop.com who are already using our products. We have 28 years of, uh, of uh, experience in running this company, shop.com, and we have many people who have been using isotonics motives for many, many years. So if there's any issues, you know, we would have, you know, improved on our products. So I gave them a lot of uh, confidence by sharing that our company has a long history. So leveraging on our team, our company, our long experience, that put me at the forefront of, uh, you know, whenever I talk about our products. Now, how do I increase my sales, all right? So there is many ways to do it. So retailing, there are many ways to do it. One of my favorite way is to do the trial size marketing. Uh, later, I will have uh, one of my business partner, Kim Tan, will be talking and sharing about this trial size marketing. Uh, personally, I use this trial size marketing a lot because I love to give samples. I love to do survey. Uh, this is one way to expose a lot of my products, all right, to my customers. I basically uh, use this trial size marketing to create needs because people, I'm, I'm searching, I'm listening to them. I know some of their needs. And it, I want to make sure that they will look for me because I am the expert in this field. So do you want to have more BBs? Because doing shop.com is about earning, retailing profit, and also building residual income. BBs equals to weekly income. So for me, I want more BBs. So retailing is very, very part of my journey. So let me tell you that, you know, one of my favorite way to expose people to all my products is to let them keep trying on our products. I basically run a lot of events, all right? I partner with my partners and I will host party events. Uh, these were all my, my first four, first three years of building the business. I have done it a long time. But right now, I can see the duplication has started. 
many of my partners are already running events, uh, doing trial size marketing. So one of my simplest way to excite my customers is to bring them to our showroom. So um, whenever I bring them for a business presentation, I would like to bring them uh, like 30 minutes ahead of time uh, just to share with them, show them our showroom, you know, I mean, uh, the products in the showroom, the displays, and uh, let them try out some of the modest products. So this is uh, one way for me to build uh, additional income, all right, through retailing. So I also like to introduce to you all that some of the products that is really fantastic that you can make an impact almost immediately. Uh, one of the, the things that, you know, when I walk into the showroom, I will let them try eye base and I like to let them try the liquid foundation because the minute they touch the texture and all that, you know, they know the difference, okay, comparing products to products. And in my bag, I will try to bring along sachets. So you know, for trial size marketing is one way to do it. But another way is to make sure that in your bag, you're always stocked up with products that makes an instant impact on them. Uh, one of my favorite products is digestive enzyme because after a big meal, you know, this is one product that you can't do without. So just giving them a sachet, let them try the taste, the lemony taste, and then hearing them burping, you know, and telling me that, you know, wow, it feels a lot better. That is already a uh, retailing uh, in the process. I like to also bring the uh, trim tea along because just the name itself, trim tea, it sounds really cool because a lot of us, uh, we're looking, you know, many of us, I would say that, you know, we're looking at products that can help us to keep fit, right? So Trim Tea, Trim Coffee is such a cool product and it has really very, very good packaging. Now, Turn Down is one of my favorite products and I really whip it up whenever someone is feeling very, very uh, tired. So with all this good packaging, I know that I am already uh, in, a, you know, in, in the forefront because every time when I just show the sachets, I know that retailing is coming in. Now, always remember to upsell and cross-sell your products. If you want to increase your BVs, you got to make sure, number one, know what your customer wants. Because once you understand their priorities and values, it's very easy to upsell. For example, if you know a mother who's very particular about the children education and then uh, they want to make sure that you know the children are eating well you know what are the products you're going to introduce to them and if you know that some of your customers you know they values beauty more than you know what they eat so you know what are the products to introduce them so knowing your customer priorities and values will help you to upsell because you can identify products that will will complement what they are already using. So I like to also uh, uh, introduce products, okay, to them, uh, especially when I know that there's a, you know, there's certain celebration that is coming on, um, uh, maybe payday at the end of the month, I basically will upsell more because I know that they have the money to spend and they are, anyway, they are going to spend the money elsewhere. So I will identify their needs and make sure that I share with them some of the products that they can buy, all right, for celebration, uh, for birthdays, or I can even prompt the husband to buy things for the wife. Now, it is important to provide a, a transparent pricing breakdown. Many of our customers, you know, they do have a budget to spend monthly or maybe quarterly. But sometimes because uh, we are not giving them the breakdown, right, they thought they couldn't afford a, on our products. Um, because some of us, some of our customers may have that perception that our products are expensive. So if you can break down, for example, like isotonics, how much it costs them for a drink, you know, a daily consumption. like for uh, essential for about $1.40, $1.60 a day. So this kind of breakdown helps them to plan their, their purchases. And on top of that, if you break down the prices clearly to them, perhaps in that particular month, they have extra budget to spend, they may spend 
and additional money. So it's also important to identify what is the upcoming trends. So for example, motives, if you know that the trend right now is in blue colors and you know that our, co our company has already has some blue uh, colors, uh, eyeshadows, I, um, those uh, mascaras, all that, just tell them, share with them that this is a fantastic products to, 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 to buy because they want to keep up with the trend. So do be very alert what is in the market, read up, read lots of magazine, be in the know, be, you know, be, be someone that is always uh, be ahead of time. Now, I also like you all to understand that you've got to also sometimes use some of the social media posts that is posted by other people to back up on, on uh, what you're selling. Because uh, if you're telling people that, you know, TLS work, for example, you know, you got to show them data and evidence that it works. So by giving them all this posting, showing them the pictures, you're able to upsell and cross-sell. Now to differentiate what is upsell and cross-sell, upsell means that whenever you want to sell something to them, they are already buying it, but you complement it with another products, all right, that will help them to enhance the experience. How about cross-selling? So when I run any events, if I'm doing a Motis event, I would like to incorporate our skincare products too. I will just introduce one product and one what I like most is the Pentexa because whenever I do that, I'm able to cross sell although I'm doing a Motis event. And when I put in Beauty Blend into my event, I'm also cross selling from Motifs to Isotonics products. So all this helps me in my retailing. I hope with all this simple, uh, tips that I'm giving to you uh, helps you in your retailing. I know that, you know, retail, a lot of us, we are so afraid to open our mouth. But remember, uh, it's either you sell it to them or they're buying from elsewhere. Let me tell you, a lot of the customers, they're already spending money and they're spending elsewhere. So why not swing them to spend with you? Selling things to them, in, you know, is, is, is a noble way, all right? It, it's not something to be ashamed of. And I really want you all to break through uh, about this because um, I, I, I have many, many feedback from my new partners who say that I don't sell. Uh, it's very tough for me to open my mouth uh, to retail. But let me tell you, if you don't open your mouth, you don't share, money will not come in, BV will not come in. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're just owning an account and you're not making full use of it. We are partnering with shop.com and we are so privileged. As an unfranchised owner, we are basically able to access to all the exclusive products. No one else, no one else can access to all these products except through the unfranchised owner. So as an unfranchised owner, shop.com, owner, we have the exclusive right to sell the exclusive products. Be very, very proud. And because we are a product brokerage company, all our products, we have sourced it, okay, especially look, all right, we have a department that really source good products for us, trendy products that, you know, that make sure that it's, it's really high quality products. So shop.com owner has assurance that when we sell uh, Shop.com products, we are basically sharing high quality products at a very, very uh, affordable price, very, very uh, good products, okay? Uh, so we do not have to feel ashamed. So retailing is something that we really need to do it. There are five fundamentals of building basic five. Um, I look at it, you know, all the five fundamentals are important. So if you know how to do retailing, you know BVs will go up. You'll help to strengthen your team because you can share the BVs with your teammates. And also, you know that by sharing products and using products, and if all your customers are supporting you and your team member love the products, guess what? The retaining is there and your, your organization is going to be very stable and very strong. 
Now, thank you for listening to me. I'm going to introduce to you Trina Tan. She's one of my favorite okay, partners in this uh, journey. Uh, we started this journey many, many years ago. Uh, I still remember the first day when I met her, all right, in her, at her home. And um, I was still very, very young in the journey. I'm very thankful that she believes in Shop.com. She believes in me, my simple sharing. And today I'm so proud of her. Uh, she's a mother of four. Uh, she's, she works part-time, part-time, I'm not sure, part-time uh, in a real estate. Uh, she's really managing her team very, very well, uh, doing coring and doing product sharing. So she's the best person uh, to share this, uh, uh, this segment with you because she runs events almost 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 every every month quarterly okay she just say quarterly but you know i've been looking at how she's running because she keep posting on a lot of her facebook posting i thought that she runs it every month but i'm this is one partner that i'm truly very proud of okay please welcome trina tan Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks, um, Michelle, for introducing me. Yes, indeed, the first time when I see her, she was so uh, nervous sharing the, the uh, MPCP with me. But today, she did a very good uh, introduction of how to do retailing. In fact, I learned a lot of tips from her over the years that she has been coaching me along the shop.com journey. Okay, today I just want to, I want to thank uh, Corporate for inviting me to actually share what my team have been doing and how to actually host a successful party. We have been doing parties uh, consecutively and I think that party is a very good way to actually increase your business volume as well as to get a, a new business partner to actually come on board and to be, to be part of the team to enjoy the event. Okay, to... to to have a successful party, actually, there are three areas that we probably want to look into. One is the pre-event preparations, um, how you actually set up the event, the event itself, and a post-event follow up. So I just want to share with you what my team is doing for, to have a successful party. First of all, I think uh, whenever we have a party, we have to really set clear objectives. What do you want to achieve in the parties? For every party, it's not necessary that we must have a big group of people coming together. I believe that two or three, even three or four UFO that comes together to, to create an event is actually good enough. So you can actually set objective based on the BBs you want to generate, the invites you want to come, and the potential uh, friends that you want to bring them into it in order to build relationships. So with that objective in mind, that's where you actually start having the topics that you want to create the event for. Uh, you have to decide whether you want to hold a H&M event, a Motif event, or a TLS event. And there are certain of a team, think of a, um, a, a nice team that is not very um, hard selling, that you know that when you can, you can use a team to actually start the conversations with your guests. And prior to that, gather as much information as you can from YouTube, from corporate back office, product leaflet, read, read a lot of them, and then you're probably able to generate some good ideas of how to run the event, uh, run to create a team. Uh, the next, uh, involve everybody, assign roles and duties amongst the UFO that are coming in together to prepare with you. Everybody plays a role, make everybody feel uh, responsible and make everybody feel part of the organizing team, be the logistic or receptionist or treasurer, which is very important in whenever you organize an event. Um, rotate to chair the party. Once, once the event is finished, you may want to plan for the next event, get another UFO to start the ball rolling, and then everybody have a chance to actually practice the skills of organizing an event. So uh, there's one key thing that we always talk about is that we always want to simplify events, make it very simple that it can be duplicable among your uh, new UFO and so, so that everybody can start doing their mini events at their own locations. The next thing is to have a door gift. This is optional depending on what, how much budget you have. But I think if you have a H&M event, it's always good to, to actually give up our sachets, uh, which is very, very, um, good avenue for us to generate business volume. But the last one is um, at the end of the event, we usually want to uh, gather some orders. Uh, you may want to create an order form. We don't really 
in my team, we don't really create an order form, but rather we create a product information form whereby we distributed at the end of the event. And we, with that order form, we can actually provide a lot of information about what these products are all about. And you may want to give promotions and discounts to make to get your PC the urgency to place order on the day. Okay, next, uh, venues is very important. Um, if you project, you have four or three people that come together to plan an event, you may want to project each one, bring two or three uh, guests. So approximately 15 or 20. So you probably want to look for a place that can accommodate this area. A uh, value that is too big will make um, you know, the participations very low. Too small will be too crowded. So you may want to source uh, locations that is uh, reasonably for that group size of people that you are planning with. Um, convenience is very important. Who are the washrooms? Um, how to get there? Uh, ideally, it's always uh, close to MRT because uh, Singaporeans don't like to travel too far. <laughs> okay, next, um, you also want to create an area for product display, um, you know, sufficient area. So you may have to plan for uh, logistic like tables and chairs, um, for cloth, materials for the product display. Uh, next important thing is the location doesn't have laptops, projectors, you have to plan for it. Put, do a checklist so that uh, you know what the things that you need to uh, bring along um, the most important the last most important thing is that every ufo must have a working tablet or smartphone because at the end of the day you want to create uh, preferred customers and um, make order through your handphone so make sure everybody have their phone with uh, enough batteries all right okay um the next is um Create an e-invite. Um, nowadays, we actually send e-invites to WhatsApp instead of emails or even send a hard copy. So e-invites are important. Um, on the right side, we have two uh, invites that's created by my team. Um, it's your time to shine. It's a motive event. Drink to better health is our h &M event. Um, it's your time to shine. You can actually download these um, flyers from our back office. All right, so create a team that's not so hard selling so that people are curious to know what do you mean by um, time to shine? What do you mean by drink to have a better health? So you create a curiosity so that you can easily invite your prospect or your guest. Um, also, you may want to give a directions of locating the locations, uh, how to come about to the place. Okay, um, one or two days before to a party, uh, uh, important to actually drop a reminder, uh, remind them to come. The other thing that was being shared by Sarah Rose during her local seminar, which I think is very innovative, is to get your guests to, to bring something to the event. Because a lot of time when we invited guests, uh, last minute it says they couldn't make it, they had this on, and it's, it's, it's just fly kite, you know, so it's quite disappointing. So if you put a responsibility to a guest to bring something like ice, uh, water, cups or everything, maybe your guests will feel that sense of uh, contribution that they will make a commitment to come on the actual day. It is one of the suggestions that uh, we're exploring. Okay, the next thing is, these are the pictures that um, we have conducted. Um, I would suggest that to dress uniformly, ideally everybody with the shop.com t-shirt, if not just dress uh, similar colors so that you can differentiate yourself from the guests so we know who are the guests, who are not the guests. And uniform uniformity also tells people there's a sense of unity within the team. Do bear in mind that your guest comes is also looking at the unity among the team. If they are your potential business partner, your unity and the collaborations within the team due to the events is very important for them to decide whether to partner you for this business or not. And Doggy, these are some of the samples, um, ideas that we have uh, done. Okay, on the event itself or event setup, um, everybody plays a part. Um, all of us are not product specialists, but I think we can contribute a little bit of what we know about the product. So since we are um, advocating uh, how good uh, isotonics are, or motifs or TLS, we are the product of the product. So share what you know. Uh, the next important thing is share testimonies. Assign teams to come and share their points of view or their testimony. And if they have, show visual, because visual tells a thousand words. So it's very convincing how good our product are. Uh, if you are running a motive event, probably you want to do a, a, a makeup on, uh, on someone who actually don't really do makeup. So you can actually do a great contrast of before and after. Support materials, you can find lots of support materials from our back office. 
uh, in fact, you, you, do, you do not have to spend a lot of time creating new uh, product flyers and information. All are beautifully designed and easy to, to understand. So it's very easy to duplicate when you want to use, uh, want to conduct an event. Um, some of the product display that we, um, that we do, multi, TLS, um, whatever we, whatever events we plan, uh, whether H&M, we always, always have a small corner that displays other product for cross-selling and what Michelle have shared just now. Uh, it's important to cross-sell your product. So your guests will know that we not only have health products, we also have cosmetic skincare and weight management. Okay, um, some of the standees, all these are you can find from a back office. Uh, do, do remember to bring some brochures and catalogs and magazine. Prime Magazine is a very good source of materials to share with your guests. They know that we are actually uh, um, featured in magazines, health magazines, um, some snacks for your guests. Uh, as I mentioned about snacks, uh, it's important to uh, take note of the gas dietary restrictions whether they are vegetarians or they are Muslim. So you must create, you probably want to have some refreshment that cater to their needs. Uh, product samplings, um, always important to know, um, to let customers, your guests sample our products because not many people know how to prepare as well. Not many people drink um, drinks, nutrition products. So it's the first time that they actually encounter with drinkables um, isotonic. So let them try even for uh, Pentaxial that what Michelle's always been selling. Let them try the Pentaxials on their skin and let them feel how smooth they are after applying Pentaxial. Okay, so if you are hand handling food in the external event, always remember to check whether you are allowed to bring in food to do sampling or even consume at the location. Uh, next. Uh, product demo. Okay, um, it is very important that I shared earlier, it's important to have uh, testimonies shared amongst your um, UFO with your guests. So it's also important for us to do some demonstrations, how to mix the product, how to um, how to drink the products or even mix different isotonic or even uh, beauty blend for your guests for motif event. Uh, this is what we have done uh, in our recent H&N event. Uh, we have a corner even to promote Trim Tea and Trim Cafe, and we let guests try our four in one, and as well as doing a calcium demo to show our guests how good our calcium is compared with other products. Okay, uh, the most important thing is to take order. This is what we actually want. Every event, ideally, we want to create as much BV as possible. Um, so sampling is important for them to try different products, not only the products that we, we showcase or provide testimonies. Um, if you have a cross-team event, it's important to help each other, uh, especially if, if you're available and you do not have guests, go around in the room to actually offer your personal help to, to help your other UFO to, to explain or rather to sign the customer up. Always prepare to whip up your handphone to sign it up as preferred customer. Uh, lastly, important to keep your events within two and a half hours. Uh, keep it short and sweet so that your guests will not feel lethargic and always create at least half an hour for your guests to, to tr go to the display corner to actually try the products or the sampling corner to drink, drink our products. Lastly, the two thing is we have to follow up, important to follow our guests, whether they buy or don't buy on a day, follow up your guests within the next three or five days and of course get the feedback from your guests. Uh, don't jump to upsell immediately. If they, if they buy one product from you, just follow up with customer with one product and probably in the future, you can actually upsell them to other products that we have. Um, importantly, invite them for the next event, check with them what kind of events they would like. So you may want to plan the events for your guests in the future. Uh, there are some guests that we count are really interested in our business. Uh, There's also a good time for you to introduce, make appointment with them after the event to, to, to talk to, invite them for our UBP. Okay, in my team, uh, we measure our home party success uh, measurements is based on number of invites, number of BVs generated in our team, and the number of invites who may not buy product but interested in our business. So we measure it from home party to home party to know, to know what are the things that we need to improve for the next event to make it better. Um, it is very, it's not easy to start the events, but I would encourage everybody to just start something. You may not get it right the first time, but I believe surely you can make it better the next one. So keep trying until you get it right. All right, so um, 
Okay, so that's uh, that's my the end of my sharing right now. We have uh, Kim, who is one of uh, my closest UFO or rather my closest business partner. We're from different teams, but she's a very very generous lady who has been really helping me and even uh, motivating me sometimes when I lost in the business and I thank Kim for, for being there whenever I need help. Uh, Kim has been in the business for uh, three and a half years and um, she's very diligent and very caring and very uh, self-motivating. So right now today she wants to share with us uh, how to use how to use Sashay to create a party or something like that. So let's hear from her. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Corporate for letting me have a chance to do this webinar. And uh, just sitting down here and listening to Michelle and Trina talk about retailing is really uh, very enlightening. There's many things that I picked up and I would like to listen to it again, this webinar. Um, yes, Michelle covered the general thing about uh, retailing um, and it narrowed down into having parties, which was covered by Trina. So now I'm going to zero in uh, further and now we're going to do uh, how we do a uh, sachets party now this would not be your typical wellness uh, party um, it was the first time for my team to try it out as well and uh, we wanted to see how this would really uh, take off um, generally my team is just uh, very excited about doing skincare and motives so this is something new for us and i'd just like to share with you how we did for this and uh, we did a bit of a post-mortem as well, post-evaluation. And so this is a combination of our experience as well as the post-evaluation. Right, so Sashay's party, Sashay to better you. Right, uh, Trina covered a lot about how to conduct an event. So basically all the points are there is just uh, going through over again what she has said. So I will just move on very quickly, perhaps to the survey form. Um, this is something that we did not do it the first time, but definitely the next time we will do this survey form. Um, what I find that's very interesting about having a survey form is um, to highlight to people, our guests, all right, perhaps there are certain things about themselves that they are not aware of. So when we put questions like that on hand, it makes them pause to think if this is applicable to them. Is this the experience that I have, you know? And if they have this kind of experiences, then maybe they're too busy to even think about what they could do to make themselves feel better. So this survey form is really uh, to help them realize what their body is actually telling them, is to make them realize. So um, this might be the, uh, normal conditions that they are experiencing from day to day and so they just well normal to them but really is there a better way that they can um, kind of live their life right so next one that we go to is um, the display which was covered by um, Trina earlier on uh, just to highlight here because we are doing a typically um, uh, not a typical health event but just zeroing in on sachets. Uh, for the display, we put in other isotonic products as well as the products that are non-isotonics. This is a very uh, good indication or good exposure for our company. We are not just selling one product, sachets. We are selling a whole lot of other things in other forms, in a bottle, in a full-size bottle. We are selling a uh, heart health, we're selling things for our gut and stuff like that. And of course, do put up some flyers for people to read. So that being the uh, display, uh, it also gives people a chance to read up on something that um, they are not, that's not being presented on that day. And perhaps they might even see an alternative to what they are already consuming. The other thing that we did not do, but we will surely do next time round, would be an order form, which was covered by Trina. Now, I would like to give the order form to my guests uh, at the beginning of the event um, when we are going through the products. Now, I've listed down the products according to the order that they are going to be presented. So, 
I place myself in the shoes of my guests. I come to an event, I'm listening to the presentation going on. And as uh, my team, as the, as the UFOs are coming up to present product information, I'm looking at this product, I'm tying visually and with my, what I'm hearing in my head. And along with the survey that I've done before, I'm also asking myself, yeah, this is something that I really need. So putting up an uh, order form like that with the benefits of the product, it makes me think, do I need it? Is this applicable? Is this relevant to me? And if it is, I'm asking myself, how much is it? So the order form is very useful in that manner because I will then know whether or not I'm going to buy this item now or later according to my needs. So uh, this is what we're going to do next time. Right. Uh, in Singapore, we have sachets in three categories. The ultimate ALO is for gut health, the isotonic essentials, as well as for weight management. So we categorize our sachets accordingly. Uh, of course, uh, in the um, presentation of our products, uh, what we did was we got um, different UFOs to come up to volunteer to talk about the products. I thought that was a pretty good idea because it gives the UFOs, our, my partners, a chance to uh, read more about the product, to know the product better so that they can present it. And on top of that, they also uh, give a testimonial or tell a story about the product that they've consumed. Now, for the Isotonics Daily Essentials, I've also placed the four individual bottles of the daily essential kit together with the box of sachets. This is to tell people, our guests, that you can either buy the sachets in the box, 30 day supply, or you could buy a 90 day supply in a kit. Then of course we have our turn up, turn down, women's health, trim tea. Right, and here we are, uh, I'm showing you some pictures of what happened in our event. So we have husband and wife team coming up to share the testimony about the product they have consumed. Uh, we have um, someone talking about the product, giving information, and then we have sampling. Now, what we did differently for this event was after one person talks about the product, another person shares a testimonial or a story of the product, and then it is followed by sampling. So there again, with our guests, they're holding on to the product form. Uh, to the order form. They are listening and they are also tasting. And therefore, the decision making process is already on the way. All right. Next one to wrap up the event, uh, this is something that uh, we could do. Perhaps we could run a quiz. And if you were to run a quiz, perhaps it would be a good idea to inform the uh, guests that, hey, we're going to have a quiz at the end of this presentation so that they will attune, uh, they will keep their attention um, on, the, on the presentation. So perhaps for the quiz, you could give questions at the end of it and provide sachets as a prize. Um, another idea would be to offer a, a free ticket to the next health event. That would be a great uh, way to you know, uh, reward the correct answers in quizzes. The other thing is that we also want to have a sale that's something that, uh, that's a reason why we have a party. Um, and of course, we would like to, uh, to it reiterate that for the TLS trim, we need to buy three boxes to see any uh, notable results. And of course, uh, three would be quite an expense for them. So perhaps we'd like to give a discount. And uh, for our event, any purchases on the day itself, we would want to uh, push the sales through by giving a 10% discount just for that day's purchase. And we would like to invite uh, interested guests to the next health event, maybe on antioxidant, maybe on gut health, etc. cetera. And uh, if we do know of anyone who perhaps have shown a great deal of interest and maybe they're asking questions and perhaps maybe from pre-knowledge about our guests, we might mention that actually there is a business behind this, um, there is a business opportunity behind these products. And the most important thing, after the event, each person who has brought guests should follow up. And we should mingle around so that we could share and help each other. Now, 
why did we choose sachets? For one, the customer, and for us as UFO. First and foremost, sachets are pre-formulated. So it's a no-brainer. Tear the sachets, pour the contents in, make it up, and you drink it up. So it's pre-formulated, you don't have to think. It's convenient to use because you don't have to pour into, a, you don't have a special spoon, you don't need to clean up your, your caps and stuff like that. So it's very convenient to use. And for people like uh, who are maybe uh, on their own and they are not very, uh, they are elderly, to cut a sachet open and pour it out is a lot easier for them. Now, it is also a travel must have. Uh, the last time I went to Greensboro, I was held up at customs. And I know um, in Australia, if you do bring in anything that is open, it will be subject to checks. So when you do travel, sachets are really wonderful because first and foremost, they are sealed and it's labeled. So because it is a powder, um, I think some of the customs are a bit wary about powders in case it might be mistaken for drugs. And we hope that we don't want to be put into the customs room and be interrogated. That's the last thing we want when we travel. Uh, what about when we go to work, right? Uh, we might not go in and have a good breakfast. We might be very stressed at work. So for a quick pick-me-up, you might want to go for a turn up, right? Now, everybody loves to try for free. So for the customer, that's really great for them to try first for free. And if they are already consuming the products and they want to share about the products with their friends and their relatives, and they say, come, sample something, it is always easier for them to give away a sachet instead of a whole bottle or even to pour it up into another container. And lastly, for the customer, I feel it's a very important thing, is the price point. Now, let's take a look at Daily Essentials Kit. If my customer was to say, I can either buy daily essentials kit or daily essentials 30 day sachet pack box. If I have a problem with cash flow, but I really need a product, I would rather buy the box of 30 sachets than to fork up $285 at one go. So the first purchase or the outlay per purchase, it becomes more affordable for my customer. So what is this for the UFO that we, will, we want to sell sachets? So with the thinking in terms of affordability for the customer, now we're talking about earning monthly BV instead of quarterly BV. So for the customer who has bought a kit, then the next time you're gonna earn any BV a re, from the repeat uh, sale would be three months later. Whereas if you had sold a box of sachets, then the repeat sales would be monthly. And not only is a BV monthly now, you also get a regular profit. Now, it is also a very low cost marketing for UFOs because sachets, if you work out the cost, it will be about $1 plus to maybe about $3 plus, all right? And if you were to give three for trial marketing, it's only about $10. Instead of saying, hey, this is a bottle of OPC. Wow, your heart will ache. How much is that that you have to pay? That will be your cost. So it's really a low cost marketing to use sachets. And next thing is that we do expose our products and business through sachets. Just think about it. For every sachet that you carry in your bag, for every sachet that you put on the table, for every sachet that you hand to someone, everybody will see isotonics. They will ask you, what is it? Right? So it's a chance to explain. And our company is so clever. Just take a look at our packages. They are very brightly colored, bright orange, bright pink, bright blue. Right? So it, it will not miss the attention of anyone who sees the sachet. Even if the sachet is in the dustbin, it will stand out. Right, now we talk about events to promote our sachets. You don't really have to wait for an event to promote your sachets. You can use your sachets to improve your day-to-day -day retailing. Now, Michelle mentioned about creating BVs and 
So the trainer about upselling. So when you create BVs, when you use sachets for trial marketing, you create new customers. You induce them to try your products. Right? And for customers who are perhaps are used to taking uh, non-isotonics products, it's a great chance for them to try what isotonics delivery is all about. Moving forward, this is me. I'm not a sales girl. I used to do accounts. I used to do admin. I don't know how to sell. And, but I believe in the products, how good they are, because I've really benefited from it. And from the depths of my heart, I really want to help people. And when I help people, that's when the sales come in. So this quote from Zig Ziglar really resonates with me. Stop selling, start helping. Because good things do start from goodness. And uh, like what was said earlier on, trial marketing is something that every one of us should try on a consistent, consistent basis. So do check it out, what Phil Gildo has to say in his trial size marketing video. It's really, really very good. Lots of points to take away, lots of points to put into practice. So I thank you very much for listening in today to today's webinar. Thank you.